this tutorial, we're going to be looking at John Mayer's oh, Come Back to Bed, a special live version he did on the Carson Daly Show in 2004. This was sent in by Joel Allen, and what makes this version so special is it's the first time in my mind that I can hear the chord progression and what he's actually doing. It's an amalgamation of all the multi-layered parts you hear on the studio version, with the horns and the, and the keyboards kind of covering everything up. So it's it's pretty fantastic. It was performed solo, just Mayer and his guitar on stage, and it's, uh, it's quite an interesting take on it. So I'll teach that in its entirety, including the outro solo, and then we're going to go back on the end and we're going to do some of the melodies from the studio cut and the solo as well, so you can throw that in too. Let's get started. So get yourself a nice clean tone, and we've got the pickup in the first neck position. Our pick is going to be between our fingers to start. We're going to finger pick our way in and then switch to the pick and strum our way out like so many John Mayer songs of this period. I tend to hold it between the second and third fingers like this. Mayer holds his between the first and the second. Um, I like my way better because I have these fingers free to do things. So let's look at the first four measures. So that was an A major into a G major, up to the 10th fret for a D major, and then we have this F flat 5 with a G in the bass. And then starting the whole thing over again. So that uh, chord that we're using is kind of altered a bit, and it allows us to do this neat thing with the uh, third finger, where we're lifting off the third finger to do this uh, neat little hammer on pull off lick two notes at a time. So let me show you that fingering. So instead of the typical broom handle grip, grip where we're doing our thumb on the E5, first finger on B5, second finger on G6, third finger on D7, that's what everyone knows. We're gonna do this. I'll give you the fingering. Thumb on E5, first finger on G4, second on B5, third finger on G6, and then the pinky on the D7. So it's the same thing. You might have to practice going to that one instead of this one. When you lift your third finger off, you get this. You go from the major third to the second, and that opens up uh, the ability to do all these nice little hammer-on pull-off licks. So we're going to keep this fingering throughout the three major chords. So get used to sliding it up and down, and you might have to practice going between uh, the old way and the new way for this. So starting off, we do two pulls of the A major with this fingering. timekeeping slaps before sliding into the G. You probably saw me shake the neck. I'm just doing that for a bit of vibrato because it's easier than trying to bend all the uh, individual strings while they're fretted. And when we get to the G we do this. So that's the first of those little hammer-on licks. So we do the whole chord pretty much. On the tab I believe we're just doing the sixth string and the two middle strings. Pull those. And we hit the bass part of the chord. Then we go down to the G and the B strings. So it's. Then we go back to the bass and we start our hammer on pull off stuff. So uh, I'm going to lift my pinky off at this point so I get more oomph into the hammer ons and pull offs. We're going to go from the G2 to 4 with a hammer on. And at the same time, we're also hitting that B3 like that. And then we're going to do a pull off, same thing in reverse from the 4 to the 2. Go back to the bass, hit the octave at the D5, and then the bass note again. So let's do that all. And the reason I'm lifting my pinky off when I do that chord is try doing the hammer on <laughs> when you got your pinky down. Uh, you just don't have the power to do it, or at least I don't. So I like to lift it off to do the that part there. So there's a lot of uh, low, high kind of stuff happening here. One more time. Like that. So from the top, A, two pulls. Like that. And I'm going to slide that whole thing up to the 10th fret. So our fingering there is we've got our thumb on E10, first finger on G9. We have our second on B10. We've got our third finger on G11, pinky on D12. 
same thing. And we do this. Like that. So we hit the chord like that. We go to the bass. Back again to the high part. Back to the bass. Lift off our third finger. Back to the bass. High part again. And then open E. The reason the open E is there at the end is because we're often transitioning with that open E everywhere as we lift off our fingers to do another chord. It's a long time mayor thing. Let's do this from the top of what we've learned so far. A major. And then we go down to this chord. This is a relatively new one. This is the F with the flat five and the G in the bass. So we've got our thumb on the E3, we've got our second finger on the D3, first finger on the G2. And we're also hitting that open B and open E2 if you want it. So we come down to this. Like that. So we hit the whole thing, go back to the bass note, hit the bass note one more time, and then we start this alternating thing. Low, high, low, high, low, high. So low, open E, low, third fret of the B, which is a, which is a new thing we're gonna fret. Low, and then the already fingered G2, back to the low G. So one more time, slow. Like that. So that whole progression, that's the whole cycle. So once more, one more time. start over again. I want to say at this time that I never expect anyone to memorize all these tiny little variations. They're just information at this point to help you make this tune your own when you go to play it yourself. John Mayer never plays anything the same way twice. It's one of the things I like about him. It's also one of the things I don't like about him because it makes my tutorials 45 minutes to an hour long. So take this and make it your own. We're going to continue with all these variations exactly as they sounded on the, uh, the performance and uh, let's start looking at the next section. Continuing with measures five to six. A little bit of the next measure in there because they're always kind of running into each other. So that uh, measure five, we kind of hammer on into that A like that. So we've got our first finger on the G4 We've got our second finger on the B5, thumb on the low E5. We're hitting that like that and then hammering on with our third finger onto the G6 to start it off. Then we're doing that low high stuff, low, and then hammer on, low, and then just the unhammer on version of the, uh, the two note dyad there. We have our G4 and B5 back to the bass and then we hit the pinky on the D7 like that one more time. And then end off with the low, or we can do an open E in transition before going back down to the G now. This is different. Like that. So we hit the G first time, then we go back to the low note, then we do a kind of descending, ascending thing like this. What we're doing is we're doing a uh, so three on the low E, open A, and then second on the A. At the same time, we're going third fret of the B and the high E open, and then the second fret of the B, high E open, and then the two bottom strings open at the same time. Like that, so G. Hit the bass note to start it all off, and then pluck the bass note at the same time. Let's, let's go over the fretting. Thumb is on the E3, Second finger is on the B3, and we're, we've got our uh, third finger on the open E like that. So we're hitting like that. Pluck that. And then we're going to lift off. We're going to go thumb on the open A, and we've got our first finger on the second fret of the B, and we're also going to hit the open E at the end like that. That's the second one. 
And then the last one is just taking our second finger on the A2, and then we've got our uh, second and third fingers poised on the open strings to hit those like that. So let's take that from the beginning of measure five. And then we're back up here. So we're doing the uh, hammer on at the D shape, bass, another hammer on, bass, pull off, bass, and then we got our pinky on the D12, and then open back to that F flat five with the G in the bass. It's a bit different now. We do the opening bit. off like that. So instead of uh, the first one was this one is so we're going from the B3 to the open E back to the B3 and then we're kind of pre foreshadowing by hitting this E5 A to go into the to continue on to the next measure. Let's uh, do what we've learned so far and then I'll concentrate a bit more on that last bit that's different. So that last bit with the F flat 5 G. We started off the same way we did before, but the low high part is different. Low B3, low open high E, low B3. And we let these ring out. They sound nice when you let them ring out. And then we go to the E5. That kind of is a foreshadowing into the next hammer-on into the A chord. Listen to the rings. Measures 9 to 12. So the A part is pretty easy. We, we're going to hammer on into it. And then we're just going to keep those uh, hammer on two strings here we have the G6 and B5 and we're just going to alternate like that so hammer on into it, into it with the bass note at the E5 and then low high, high open and then to the G chord we do this so we hit the chord hit the bass part of the chord and we do this we're going to do a two string kind of hammer on pull off like that. So we've, we're hammering on from G2 to G4 with that B3 as well. Hammer on pull off. Land with your pinky on the D5. And then we're going to take our first finger. We're going to bar from the D2, G2, B2 like that. But we've still got our second finger on the B3. So this is what we're fretting. And we're going to hammer on from the D2 to 4 like that. And we're going to pluck that when it's fretted down. And we're going to lift off our third finger. So. And uh, open string, and then we transition to the next chord. Let's do that slow. And then we're going to the D. So for the D part, sometimes he always doesn't do the uh, low to high alternating. So in this case, in this particular measure, we go low, no low alternating, pull off, then he goes back to it low, and then landing on the D12. Let's just do that slow. So it might not be apparent, but he skipped a, uh, a low pedal there. Instead of constant eighth notes back and forth, he skips them sometimes. So we've got the open 
E for the transition, back to this thing again. And it's a bit different again this time. We hit that F with the flat five and the G in the bass. And this time we go B, three, low, high E open, low, and then the fretted G2 before sliding into the A for the next cycle. Let's do the whole thing slow. Measures 13 to 17 are where things really start to get fun. chord, bass, hammering on again, pulling off, and then fretting. So that the last one is not a hammer on, it's like a fret of the uh, G6 and B5. So from the top, and then in the G part, same as before, the descending, ace descending thing. So the D part is different. And we end off that part with our thumb on the E12, low E12, trying not to make it sharp. So we start off the same. We have, we're have we plucking the E10 and then the hammer on on the two stringer on the bottom. And then uh, we just do the pull off, land on the D12, bring back the bass note, and we do this. So there we're barring with our first finger on the D9 all the way down. We're going to do a hammer on. And at the same time, we still got our second finger on the D10. So from the top. So after that hammer on from the D9 to the D11, we're just going to pluck the, pluck the two middle strings at the ninth fret back to the bass note back to the D9. And then move your thumb over to the 12. It's a bit fiddly, so let's do that one more time slow. After that, we do this thing. And here's where the warning, you're going to break your hand doing this, comes into play. It's flashing right now that you're going to hurt yourself doing this. And uh, he goes into this. What the hell is that? That took me uh, an hour to figure out, but it's stupendous. It's so uh, nice sounding, but it hurts to play. What you're going to do is take your thumb, you're going to put it on the low E. You're going to take your third finger, put that on the D12, like that. So 12th fret, like that on the D and the E. Take our first finger, bar the D9 and B9. Second finger is going to go on the B10, and that allows us to play this chord. And if we left off our second finger, we get that. And the melody is like that. So we start off by hitting the two outside strings. We have our B10 and our E12. That's the uh, bass note and high note together. Then this is all high notes. Lift off, and we're going to hit that B9 and G9. Then we go back to the fretted B10, and then lift off. Hit those two bass notes at the same time on the D and E again. And then walk up to the G9, and then the B9. That's it. Ah, kills. The man has monkey thumbs, man. <laughs> what can we say? So you want to play that chord for the shortest amount of time possible. Let's play the D and that thing, whatever it was, um, after my uh, the feeling returns to my hand. Pretty cool. I, I really like that part. I don't know what that is. Afterwards, we do this. 
and we start into the pre-chorus. So we're doing something similar to Listen to the Music by the Doobie Brothers. If you're familiar with those chords, just in a slightly different order. So we're barring with our first finger the ninth fret from the A on down. We're going to include the low E and we're going to hammer on from A9 to A11. That's the first part. And then we're always going to be going back to this open E. Then we're going to hit the barred uh, ninth fret on the two middle strings back to the open E. Then we're going to do this double hammer on. That's uh, barring D9, G9, B9. And we're going to hammer on to the uh, D9 to D11 on the D and then B9 to B10 on the B. So we go from to this. But it's a hammer on like this. Back to the low E or a percussive note. And then we finally end things off with a stab at the middle strings, ninth fret, like that. So. And it ends with a, a pull down from the A11, slide, and a couple time keeping slaps. One more time, slow. And after this, we're into the pre chorus. Measures 18 to 23 are the pre-chorus, the first four bars of which sound like this. A lot of timekeeping slaps and chunks in there. So to start off, he does a series of double stops. Double stops are two notes played at once. We're going up like that. And the first time we do it, we also have a bass note. So we've got our thumb on D E2, we have our third finger on D4, first finger on G2. So pluck all those together, and then slide the two middle string shapes up two frets. So we have our third finger on D6 now, first finger is on G4. And then the shape changes now, we're into the major shape of this double stop. So we've got our third finger on the D7, and our second finger on the G6. So. We have the open E, and then we start doing our D thing. He does this. So it's the same intro we've seen before with the bass note. No, then we start playing the bass notes, landing on the D12, and then that barred hammer on. We're, we're barring from the D9, and we're gonna hammer on to the D11, all while still forming that chord where we're holding uh, barring ninth fret, D all the way down, and we've got our second finger on the B10, like that, hitting the low E. So slow from the top, those two things. I just want to get that hammer on again. And for measure 19, he does this. What we're doing is the uh, listen to the music we're going from A9 to A11 with the ninth fret being fretted underneath and the open E like that. So we do one of those, then we do this. So we've got our pinky on the E12, and we're going to do a slide up and down from A9 to 10, back down to 9, back to the E12, to the E9, back to the 12 again and then a hammer on from A9 to 11, slid down, and two timekeeping chunks. I use my thumb or my first finger, usually the first finger just down strokes like that. Some timekeeping chunks. Then we'll repeat the double stops coming up. More traditional. And then this. So just more strumming with that hammer on chord from A9 to 11. Low note. Alternating and finishing with a hammer on from D9 to D11. This time there's like four down, up, down, up to end that off. So let's do the whole thing slow, the pre chorus. Measure 
This is 22 and 23 end off the pre-chorus. So we're starting off here at the ninth fret with a F sharp minor seventh. So our first finger is barring the A9 all the way down. Third finger on D11. We have our bar on G9 and then second finger on the B10. So we're plucking the whole chord to start off, and then the bass note of it, and then the high part, bass note, high part, let that hang, and then very quickly you slide down to the fourth fret of the A string for an C sharp minor seventh. So then you slide up into a D. That's just first finger on the A5, and then our third finger is barring. D7, G7, B7. We're going to do the same thing. Whole chord, bass part, and the high part. Then we move into this open string to transition into this D chord with an E in the bass. So the fingering for that is thumb on E12, again, muting the A. And I have our third finger is on the D12, second finger is on the G11, first finger is on the B10. Then when we get there, the rhythm is that. So let's do the whole thing slow. One more time. and we're switching to our pick at this point. This is 24 to 31 or the chorus and he's got his pick now so grab that and get ready for some strumming. We're going, uh, it sounds like this, let's just go through it first. <laughs> off the guitar open all string strumming as he transitions between the chords that's always one of my pet peeves of guitar transcriptions they have everything going perfectly with no lift offs and open string garbage in between but it's there and you should do it so to start off we're doing an a sus4 and that's a regular a major broom handle grip with our pinky now on the g7 and then we, we lift our pinky off that that's the fourth of the A major chord. It turns into the third of the A major chord, and it's just an A major. So A sus4, A major, and we're also ringing the open high E here. So we're got our we have got our thumb on E5, muting the A, third finger on D7, G6 is next, B5, and then open high E. So two notes sounding the same. So it really rings out. an open string upstroke as he uh, changes to this chord here. I don't even know what that one's called. It's a D something with an F sharp on the bass. Let's leave it at that. So we've got our thumb on E2, muting the A, open D string. We have our second finger on the G2, third finger on the B2, open E. And then we're lifting off our third finger to get that open B now. So it's it was. So we're lifting off our third finger to make that B2 into an open B. And when he transitions from that chord, he actually does two down ups on open strings before starting back with that A sus4. he's changing from the A sus4 to the A is here. And a little comment on John's strumming technique, full chord stuff. He's always going down, up, down, up, down, but he's not always catching the chords on the way up. Those are the longer, longer ones. So there's a long one to start off. Pulls the pick back up, doesn't strike, and then he starts 
that. So he starts strumming everything on the upstroke. So occasionally you'll see him missing them for longer notes. But you can't help, can't help but have your arm going down, up, down, up, down. So it's resetting for each of those strums. A good way to think of the strumming pattern is one, Where the the ones you're actually skipping over the strings on the upstroke, and then in the one two three four is you're actually going down up down up down up and hitting the strings each time. So one, one, two, three, four. if that helps at all get the rhythm. And then for this part, it's one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, or on the open. So let's do that slow. But on the very last one, things change up. He actually starts off with the A major instead of the uh, sus4. So instead of this, he does this. So just reverse it the last one. And then instead of going to that F sharp chord, he does that F with the flat five, with the G in the bass that we've seen before. And he just strums away on that. the first chorus. Measure 32 is verse 2, this time with the pick. Sounds a lot different. He does this for the first four bars. When I first heard him play it, I thought he was doing some kind of delay pedal thing. I thought he was doing this. Because his um, hand wasn't moving, the right hand was just standing up there in the air, not doing anything. So let's fix our delay so we don't have to deal with that. So what he's doing there is he's going A major, hitting it once, hand in the air. Then he's just fretting with the uh, first, third, and second fingers, first, second, and third fingers, the uh, that triad there from the D7 G six to B5. So strum, and then do two of these. And then down to the G, same thing. So we strike the G once, two presses, and then he does some quick, one, two, three. And then up to the D, two presses on the D, and uh, that's got a three rush thing, so it's. And then we can strum out. Then we go down to that F, with the flat five and the G in the bass. So we do that chord like we've done before. One, two, three, double there, then we lift off our first finger to get that open A. And then we go to the low part of the chord and then we finger the D5 with our pinky. And then get the whole chord open after that. So it's... So slow. Very interesting technique. So the takeaway points are the first A major. <coughs> one, two, two, one, two. When you get to the G, it's G, one, Two, one, two, three, one, two. Same with the D. D, one, two, three, three. So be aware of those quick one, two, three strums on there if you want to kind of do what he did on that track. Mm -hmm. Continuing strumming verse two, measure 36. So we continue with that A major, strum, fret, fret. Now we're strumming now throughout the whole rest of it. No more uh, left-handed hammer-on presence. 
slide down to the G and we're going to go and we're going to take our pinky now and throw it on the E5 to get this. So the rhythm, rhythm for that is without the pinky and then add the pinky. So I'm hitting the high part, hitting the low part, high part, low part, like that. So we do four of those, and then we transition to the D. So from the top. Then we do this up at the D. So we're doing this melody. And we're doing that by doing the same fingering for the hammer-on chord for the D we've always been. So the key note is going to be this G11. Strum everything. We've got the uh, E10 muted A, D string can ring open, and the high E is muted. So then lift off your third finger to get that G9. Take your pinky, put it on the D12, and then your third finger on the D. 11 and then go so there's a couple muted bass notes in there but you can do it any way you want as long as you get that melody and then we do that crazy chord again let me fret it properly so what we're doing on that chord is we got our thumb on 12 and, and if you can Actually try and fret that A12 and that D12 and then bar the first finger on the G9 and B9. And it goes long, long. And then we do this. So that last part again, we've done something similar, the listen to the music chord. This time we're ending off in the hammered on position, fretted position instead of the unhammered on position we did before if you want to use that to remember. So slow. So we're doing that thing we did before. We're hammering on from A9 to 11 with the open E and then some barred ninth fret underneath. And then we're hitting the A9, lifting off, hitting the barred ninth fret at the top in the open E. And then hammering on from D9 to 11, and then lifting off and hitting the two middle strings in the ninth fret. And then we're going to do that hammer on shape. We're not going to hammer on, we're just going to fret it, where we're fretting the third finger on the D11, bar on the G9, and then second finger on the B10. Hammering off like that. And then there's like strumming on the way down. So let's do the whole thing slow, starting at measure 36. Measures 41 to 46 are pre-chorus 2 strummed with the pick. They sound much different. Here we go. So the chords themselves are the same. The second one we go down up. And then the third one is actually just a muted strum. And then the open E on the way up. So. And then we do the. On the D. So we're just doing the full chord hammer on. We've got the bass note at the E10. And then the. We're muting the open A and open D. So we're going. So hammer on note. Lift off and make sure we're hit, hitting that G9 twice, doing the full chord, and then put our third finger on the D11, and then an open. So the whole thing. And then we go into this. 
so that's the hammer on from A9 to A11. Low E in there. Then we do the whole thing again. This time there's a lot of double strumming coming up here. So that second pass through that, we're like. So. And then it open. So. And then we do a bit more melodic stuff up here in the D. And we do that by straight old hammer on. And then lifting off to sound that G9. And then we're going to come down on the D12, 11, 9. We're trying to mute everything in between the open A and the D. So. And then that part again, it's exactly the same with the hammer on here. So let's do those first opening bars slow. off with the that F sharp minor seventh and then the C sharp minor seventh and it's uh, a lot like a with open strings here so one two three four five and then one two three four five opening up then to the D and the D is more straight open and then that D chord with the E in the bass, which is and then two on the open E. So that part's slow. So the rhythm for that last bit, D with the E, is so that part's slow one more time. to the chorus two. 47 to 54 chorus two strummed very much the same as the first pass through. It's this kind of thing. So the only difference is in measure 51, he starts that A instead of the A sus four thing where he's going. And he throws another little thing in there. He'll start with the A major. Back to E major, lifting the pinky off before going into an open up stroke and into the second part. Second part with the D chord, uh, what you might call it, with the F sharp in it, is much the same. And then we end everything off in measure 54 with just let that hang like that. That's how we end it off. And then we're into the solo that uses the loop sampler. Measures 55 and 56 are a two chord shuffle that he loops and then solos over. He switched to his fingers, so still your pick, and it sounds like this. So what we're doing is we've got this E minor sixth shape here. So we've got our first finger on A4, third finger on D5, and then our second finger is on the G4. And we're going to be pedaling from this open low E after a while. So he plucks it six times in the measure, and in the second half of the measure, he alternates with the low E like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then finally ending off with an open A. So. And there's a bit of muting on that low E so it doesn't ring too much out of control. That. Then the next chord is this. This is a D7. And what we're doing there is we have our second finger on the A5, first on the D4, and then our third finger is on the G5. And we're going to alternate that with an open A, which means we're going to lift off on the chord to hit that in between. And that's alternated throughout the measure like this. 
also six times before ending off on an open E. So the whole thing together at speed. And slow. And he loops that and then solos over it. So I switch my sound up a bit. A little bit of dirt. We're still using fingers for the first part of the solo. We switched to the pick during the fast breaks. So I've got the loop set up. Let's play the first couple of measures starting in measure 57 of the solo. Right off the bat, we've got a snap note of the B10, heavy vibrato on it. And it starts with a muted kind of pluck with the thumb on the G string, muted, and then hammered onto the 12 and bent up. So after that, we go, which is uh, hammering on from the G7 to 9 while holding the B8. So, and then getting those last two notes. Then we do this. So we're sliding from G9, pulling off from G7 to 5. And then we're doing a slide from D7 to 5, and then hitting the A5. So very fast. Then we do a nice little walk up. So we're on the E5. E8, back to the E5, to the A5, back to the E5, and then the slide from A5 to 7, and then hitting the D7. And then a quick note and pull off, so we're doing the G5, and then pulling off from D7 to 5, and then landing on the A5. So let's do that from the beginning. And then we go up here. So we're on the G9. We get the B10. We're bending up on the B13. Ending with a bend on the 12 up a semitone. Then we do it again. This time we're repeating notes on the G11. Finally ending on the G11. Then we do this nice bend on the 12th fret. Uh, step and a half. Pulling off from the E12 to 10. And then B10. Ending off on the G11. Then after that big bend, we're going to go to the E17 and just do a slide, just like that, single slide. And then in the B12, bend it up a tiny bit, return it to its normal pitch, give it a shake. And then a real aggressive pull off from B12 to B10. And then alternate between the G11 and the B10, like that. So. At this point, go to the B13 and bend it up, return it to its pitch, and then bend it up again, and let it die like that. So from that, uh... then we get into some really fast stuff. So switch to your pick, you're going to need it for the speed. He immediately comes back after a small pause with these two licks. What we're doing there is... So we're falling off the G11, downstroke, downstroke on a B10, hammer on with our third finger on the B13, 
pushing up just like a tiny bit and then upstroke on the E10 and then stopping, deadening the note. Very percussive, it's like a blur. And the reason you can repeat it pretty fast is the picking uh, stroke direction. So we're down on the G, G11, down on the B10. We have a bit of time to do that bend up on the uh, B13 ever so slight to get our pick underneath the bottom string and come up on that E10. That way the pick is in the air, we can insert it on the G string again and start all over. Very neat lick. After that he expands upon it a bit more, he does this. I'll do it slow first. And fast it sounds like this. So that is on the G going down to the B10. 13 on the B, bend up ever so slightly. Then we're going to go 10, 12 on the E, and then we're going to do a hammer on pull off from E10 to 11. Then we're going to go back to B13, and then back to the E10, and then pull off from 13 to 10, back to the G11. Then we do a bend on the B12, return it to the normal pitch, and then pull off to 10. And off an 11. Very cool lick. So after that, the licks become a bit more interconnected with muscle memory type stuff. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to teach you exactly what he's doing because he's just buzzing through it. But the licks themselves have value and it's up to you to connect them the way you want. So he does that same one again. But he adds some, he adds some extra pull-offs from the B13 to 10. So I'll leave it up to you to add those in the way you see fit. After that, he ends off with, he goes to the 12th fret, he bends it up, hits it unbent, shakes that. And then we go up to the 17th position here. So that's the uh, A minor pentatonic. And we're doing B17 to B19, E17, and then E20, and we're bending it up, and then hitting it unbent, back to the E17, and then the B17. Then we're doing this. And that's a quick way to get from the octave of the pentatonic to the 12 frets below. So once he hits that B17, we're sliding down and we're aiming to hit the G9 and sliding from the G9 to 7, pull off to G5, and then we're going to go D7 back to G5, and then we're going to end off with D7 and A7. Like that. Afterwards, we're going to do which we've done before, and then a couple slurs. And, and they're very much just kind of throw away as fast as you can, uh, mainly involving the G5 and then pulling off from 7-5 on the D, 7-5 on the A. We do a couple of those. We have this nice little section, some nice melodic dirtiness. I'll show you what I mean. So that's a nice little melodic bit with some dirt that I that I like to pay attention to. Some of the super fast licks and, and the little details of what he did right there and then are kind of lost sometimes if you can't repeat them. So uh, this kind of stuff though, it's nice to pay attention to because there's some great technique. So we have this slide on the G11 and then 10, 12 on the B. Then we have this upstroke before going into a raked downstroke on the bend on the B, hitting it unbent to the B10, to the 11, and then another upstroke dirt thing, and then a unison bend on the B13 and E10 before pulling off, landing on the G11 again. So slow. So I really like those uh, 
uh, this thing, and then a, a rake down. Sometimes we're just reor reorienting the pick to a direction that we want, or he is when he's doing that, but it really makes the details. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan played like this, controlled sloppiness, super nice. <laughs> So you can expand on that unison bend. And then he uh, has a connecting lick and he goes into this. All that is, is it's a hammer on on the E10 to 11. Pull off back to the 10 and then hitting that 13 on the B and repeating it. You get quite fast here. And after that, it just dissolves into craziness. I've tabbed what he's doing the way I hear it exactly, but I'm going to show you just the bass licks so there's a chance that you might be able to work him into your playing. So one of the things he starts doing is... So that's 10, 13, hammer on from 10 to 13, pull off the 10, and hitting the 12. So we're switching to the G12 as the bass. Then you can go into just hammering on from 10 to 11, pulling off to 12. So there's this, to this, and then to end it off he does this. And that's pretty much where they fade him out. So that last one is bending on the B12, pulling off to the 10. The G11 and then a unison or a bend on the B13, hit the E10, pull off from B13 to 10, landing on the 12 and repeating it. So he's just doing some crazy stuff to end all that out. But more or less, those uh, bass licks that I just showed you are something you can throw in there if you're trying to do something around the same thing. And that is the end of the. Carson Daly live broadcast solo. And now we're going to go on to parts of the studio cut. So one thing missing from this live version is the standard studio intro, which on the studio track is like very bouncy. I understand why he didn't put it in because this live version is a bit more plodding and mellow and has a lot of interesting kind of finger melodies going on. But if you do want to incorporate that somehow, a more mellow version of it, it's basically the listen to the music chord we were doing before in the middle of the song. And that is barring the ninth fret from the A down. Then we're going to do a hammer on from A9 to 11 while incorporating that low E and the barred D9 and G9. We go to the F sharp minor seventh, which we've done already, which is A9, D11, G9, B10. And then a quick move down to a D chord, D bar chord, so we've got a power chord. We got the uh, A5 and then barring the seventh fret on the two metal strings, sometimes the B as well. And it's like this. Wicks in there. So if you can mellow that out a bit, you can probably throw that on the beginning of your version of this tune. So there it is. So now that we've gone through the live track, we're going to return to the studio track because there's a couple melodies that are really important to the song that he didn't do in that version that I think should be heard. So starting at measure 82 in the transcription, we're going into some of these melodies we've heard before. These are played with the fingers and a slightly dirty sound. on the B12, we're bending up slowly, and then on the D7, we're hitting it with the third finger, and then coming back with the first finger on the G4. A 
lots of vibrato, playing with our fingers again. After that, we do the same thing, bend in the same place, B12. Nice slow bend. And then D7 again, but this time we're going to go to B5. Vibrato that. Bend in the same place. D7, this time to B7. Last time, bend. This time we jump down a couple strings. We're on G7 and E7. So from the top, ending on the G4. This time's on the B5. This one's on the B7. And the last one is G7 and B7. After that, measure 90, we hear this. I meant to do this. Very important to get those muted upstrokes in there, so we'll leave that flub in to make a point. So we have this. Bit of a stretch. We've got our third finger on the G9, pinky on the B9, first finger on the E5. And we're alternating between the G and B strings and the high E. I find it easier, and I've switched to my pick at this point because of what's coming up. I find it easier to use the pick for the B and the G strings. And then my first and second finger will uptick on the high E. So we do six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Slide down two frets. So now the outer edge of our chord is on the seventh and third frets. Uh, we do the same thing except we bail on the very last high note. I'll show you. We skip a beat because we're going to change the chord shape. So here's what we have so far. Then we switch to a D sus2. That's open D, second finger on the G2, third finger on the B3, open high E. And we do the same thing low, high, kind of. And then we don't do the last little high uptick. We kind of leave that last chord bit longer and then we do this. That is the G in the bass with the F with the flat 5 chord. And in fact, let me just go back really quick. This thing is the A. This part is the G. The D down here sus. That's the D up here. And then this good old F flat 5 with the G in the bass. So it's just a inversion of those chords. So that last part, we go... So we're going to fret that chord like this, and we're going to do a hammer-on as we strum from the G2 to 4. And that's a vibrato. And our thumb is also muting this open A. We don't want to hear that. Then we give it some vibrato. Lift off, and then hit it again. Then we do a big slide, I use my second finger for this, on the G up to the 11. And then we hit the B10. We do a muted upstroke to orient our pick to do a downstroke for the bend at the B12. And add lots of vibrato. Actually, that bend is in the coming measure, but for context, we put it in here. So from the top, Then halfway through measure 93, we've seen a bit of it already, we do this. So as I said before, we're sliding up with our second finger into the G11, hitting the B10, and then a muted upward uh, stroke. A dirty stroke to reorient the pick, and then a rake bend on the B12. So we're fanning down the strings, kind of muted, and 
giving it some vibrato. And we do the same thing, but we're gonna bend on the B13 this time. Rape bend on the B13. One more time, this time we're gonna be staying at the B12. We do this. So it's... Uh, and uh, after that we go... So that last bit is bending on the B12. You can do a rake bend if you want. And then 10, 12 on the high E. And then back to the B12. So let's do that whole thing slow. That's the end of the mid song solo. After that, there's an outro solo that we'll be taking a look at. Swing at Measure 99 is the outro solo. He's singing over this, but there's some really nice lines going on in the background, starting with this one. So there we're going 17 to 19 on the V, and then 17 to 19 on the high E and bending up the 19, and then repeating it. So pick 17, 19 on the B, and then hammer on on the high E, 17 to 19. Leave that for a little while, and then do a pull off, 19 to 17, and then another pull off, 19 to 17 on the B. And then we do this. So that last phrase is 17 to 19 on a hammer on, hit that 19, and then repeat the hammer on 17 to 19, and then pull off to the 17. So slow. Continuing, we do this. So that's 17 to 19 on the B string. And then 17 on the high E to the 21. And we're gonna bend the 21. And then hit it unbent. Back to the 17. And then 19 to 17. 19 on the B, 17 on the E. It's more uh, like that. And that high E 17 is very low. You don't really hear it. Then we do this. Ending off on the A 19. So that's barring the high E and B on the 17th fret, we're going to do a hammer-on with the third finger to the B19, and then go back. Then we're going to switch our fingering. Second finger is on the B17, first finger is on the G16. We're going to hammer-on to the G18, hit, playing those two notes that we're playing. And then on the hammer on So let's try that again. And we're landing on the... D19. So from the top, then we go, so that is D16, A19, then roll your finger over to the D19, back to the D16, and then ending off with that A19 with some vibrato. So slow from the top. Yeah, the tail end of measure 103 is a phrase that's going to repeat itself over the next couple of measures that's really neat. It sounds like this. And I'm talking about this part. And it's got a real rushed rhythm. So let's concentrate on getting this part timed right, and I'll show you the picking I use. I don't think it's the picking that Mr. Mayer uses. I can't see how he's picking on the studio track, unfortunately. So I'm at the A19, and I start with a downstroke. 
Then I fall onto the D string at the 16th fret, and I'm going to hammer on to the 19th. Then I fall onto the G16 with the downstroke, and I'm going to upstroke pick the 18 on the G. So starting at that A19, 16, hammer on to 19, fall on the 16 on the G, pick the 18 up. So and the rhythm is very much like that. Da -da 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 -da. And then we go on the high, sorry, on the B. So 17 to 19, hammer on on the B. Come back to that G18. And then hammer on 17 to 19 one more time on the B. And uh, give it a shake and hang out there a little bit. So we return to the well on that run up lick. But we change the next part like this. We're just adding some stuff on the end. And what we're doing is we're barring with our first finger on the B and E strings at the 17th fret, hitting those, hammering on to the B19, going to the G18. So now we do it again, and then end off like we did before with a single note hammer on from 17 to 19 on the B, and vibrato it and hang it. So slow. We're basically throwing two of these in there and then just ending off the lick as before. The run-up is the same. It's just this part with the barred 17th fret on the bottom two strings. He starts the lick a bit earlier in the context of the song so he can fit this in and he does two of those exactly the same. And then for the last one, he will do a rake bend on the B19. So the same run up, and we have a single 17 to 19 on the B, to the 18 on the G, and then uh, do a rake on the B19, bend it up again, pull it down, pull off to the B17, move to the B20 and bend that with some vibrato, and then go back to the B19, let it come down on its own, and then we end the song off with a bend on the G16, vibrato, very slow, and then a note on the B17, lots of vibrato, and we finally end it off on the high E17, give that a vibrato, and the song is done. Let's do that last part slow. And that's how he ends off the studio version of Come Back to Bed. So you want to know what key Come Back to Bed is in? Well, that's an interesting question. It's actually in A major and also in A minor at the same time, if you can believe it. So the reason for that is there's these rules where you can borrow chords from the same key's minor scale if it's in a major key or vice versa if it's a minor. So in this case, when I listened to the progression, tried to figure out what key it was in, we had A major into G major into D major. And when I got that, it's like, hey, every time I'm playing songs, if I get two majors in a row, that's usually the fourth and the fifth in a one, four, five progression. So if we move those chords up here just to demonstrate, we have a G up here and a A. So if we go backwards down the major scale from the fifth, we have five, four, three, two, one. We end off at a D. Well, that works because there's also a D in this song's progression. It's the third chord. So I thought, hey, this thing is in the key of D. Because you have one, four, five progressions, which you're familiar with, like. One, four, five, three, five progression. But then we look at some of the other chords and uh, they don't add up, mainly this one. And that kind of throws it into alert. So what's the next best guess for this song? Well, uh, it could be an A major, because that's the first chord we hear when we play. And usually 90% of the time, that is the key of the song. But that's 
no rule. That's just a coincidence. Due to the way we're always resolving to the tonic, we throw it out there as early as possible. So if we do the A major scale, there's a couple problems. There's no G. There's a G sharp. We're looking for the G, so we don't have that. And we don't have that F. I'm going to call this uh, F flat 5 of the G in the bass, mostly an F chord that we should be looking at. But a couple things do jump out about the A major key if we're picking that. One is the uh, F sharp minor 7 and the C sharp minor 7. They actually fit into the A major scale. And so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, some people don't know this, but uh, A major scale Every one of those elements of the scale, degrees of the scale, has a chord associated with it. So if we're in the major key and we're starting in A major, that first degree will be a major chord, and then minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Don't ask me about that one. <laughs> and then major again on the eighth. So that's where some of the chords line up. We have A major, uh, A minor, C sharp minor, that fits with our seventh minor, minor seventh chord. The seventh also has a list of chords that are assigned to the degrees of the scale. In the seventh scale, it's like uh, major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, uh, seventh chord, and then minor, and then uh, minor seven flat five, and then the seventh chord again. So where were we? So that means that our F sharp minor seven fits the A major and C sharp minor seven fits the A major. But this remains a problem. So we'll go over into the minor scale for A minor. Right away. That's our F. That works. And that's our G. That works. And the chords for the A minor harmonized chord scale are minor, diminished, major, minor, minor, major, that's our F right there, major, that's our G, and uh, then minor again off the top. So that is why this thing is mostly in A major, but a bit in A minor. Kind of cool, eh? Doesn't it just blow your mind? <laughs>